On January 11, China reports the first death in the soon-to-be global pandemic of COVID-19. Nations with deaths in the coronavirus is marked in white. On the 28th of January, the number of dead exceeds 100. We mark nations with over 100 dead in yellow. The Philippines saw its first dead on the 2nd of February. And eight days later, China passed 1,000 dead. We mark every 1,000 dead with a red marker. The virus spread and deaths were recorded in Japan, France, Taiwan, Iran, South Korea and Italy. By early March, deaths were recorded in the US and in Australia. And a few weeks later, the number of nations affected by the virus had risen drastically and the outbreak in Europe would become the epicenter of the global pandemic. By the end of April, Italy, France, Spain and the UK all had around 25,000 dead, and the US had passed 42,000. Lockdowns and abruptions to international trade and travel marked the spring for many nations, both those hit hard by outbreaks and those not. On January 31st, the United Kingdom officially leaves the European Union, bringing the member states back down to 27. Throughout 2020, a trade agreement between the EU and the UK is debated and finalized in the last few days of the year. On the 65th Filmfare Awards in Mumbai, Golly Boy won a record number of 13 awards, including Best Picture, while South Korean Parasite won Best Picture at the 92nd Academy Awards in Los Angeles. Blinding Lights by The Weeknd was the most streamed song on Spotify in 2020, ahead of Tones and Ice Dance Monkey. Future featuring Drake dominated on YouTube, with Life is Good, with well over 1 billion views. On the 2nd of March, Israel held its third election in under a year, leading to a compromise between the two major parties, Blue and White and Likud, under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in which the presidential office would rotate between the two party leaders. Towards the end of the year, the parliament once again dissolved, and new elections are to be held in early 2021. While Argentina, South Korea and New Zealand have liberalized their abortion laws, coming into effect in 2020 or 2021, the Polish government has gone in the opposite direction, causing protests. In Northern Ireland, Costa Rica and Switzerland, same-sex marriage is legal as of 2020 or early 2021, bringing the number of nations recognizing same-sex marriage up to 30. Montenegro legalized same-sex civil partnerships, Gabon decriminalized same-sex sexual activity, and Sudan lifted the death penalty for the same actions. On the 20th of May, Everest Daishimaye won his first presidential election in Burundi for the same party as previous president Pierre Nkurunziza, with 71% of the votes. Later, during that summer, former president Nkurunziza died, officially as a result of a heart attack. In neighboring Tanzania, elections were held in October, and incumbent John Magufuli claimed 84% of the votes. Both elections were held despite criticism of voter oppression and harsh treatment of the opposition. The fires in Australia and the United States during 2020 reached headlines, as did the unusually large locust swarms hitting crops in India, the Middle East and Eastern Africa. NASA successfully launched the Perseverance rover, set for Mars in early 2021. In India, the Badla Solar Park became the largest in the world, and the United States officially exited the Paris Climate Change Agreement in November. In EU, tougher goals were negotiated for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions within the Union by 55% by 2030, in comparison with the levels of 1990. Nigeria was declared free of wild polio in 2020, leaving only two nations worldwide 
affected by the disease. While the death tolls slowed down in Europe, in the early summer, Brazil, India, Iran and Mexico continued to see numbers rising. By the end of July and early August, the outbreaks in Mexico, Peru, Colombia, Argentina, Chile and Brazil grew fast. India and Mexico had passed 65,000 deaths at the end of August, while Brazil stood at 121,000 and the US at 183,000. A huge explosion in the Beirut port rocked the Lebanese capital in August, caused by a fire in a warehouse storing 2,700 metric tons of ammonium nitrate. On the 9th of August, Alexander Lukashenko claims 80% of the votes cast in the Belarusian presidential election, ahead of runner-up Svetlana Chikanouskaya. The election is deemed fraudulent by the opposition within Belarus and by outside observers including the EU. The election sparked heavy protests and violence, but as of the end of the year, Lukashenko remains in the presidential office. In Sudan, a peace deal was signed between the government and rebel forces, hopefully bringing an end to decades of violent fighting. Sudan also, alongside Bahrain, the UAE and Morocco normalized relations with Israel during 2020. In the latter case, brokering United States was criticized for reaffirming its recognition of Moroccan control of Western Sahara. Kosovo and Serbia took steps towards normalizing economic relations. Fighting erupted in the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh between Armenian and Azerbaijani forces in September, proving more lasting and violent than for many years. A ceasefire went into effect in November, but the region is by no means stable after decades of tensions. On the 7th of October, New Zealand elected Jacinda Ardern for her second term as Prime Minister after receiving 48% of the votes. After the general election, with Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed up for re-election, was postponed due to COVID-19. Fighting broke out in the northern region of Tigray, on the Ethiopian-Eritrean border. The local government is demanding more independence from Addis Ababa, and the fighting has caused large refugee flows internally and into neighboring Sudan. Farmers protest in the Indian capital of Delhi after they fear postponed reforms from the government would allow large companies into the agricultural industry in the populous nation. India has also during the year seen skirmishes blossom between Chinese and Indian troops deployed on the disputed border. In November, the United States presidential election is held and Joe Biden for the Democratic Party claims victory with 81 out of the 155 million votes cast ahead of incumbent Donald Trump and the Republican Party's 74 million, winning the Electoral College 306 to 232. Kamala Harris is to become the first female Vice President of the United States in 2021. The second wave hit Europe and many other nations during the fall and early winter, and new measures were put in place to reduce the spread of the virus. While South America, Mexico, the United States and Western Europe are still heavily affected by the pandemic, we now see death tolls rising in Eastern European nations like Poland, Romania, the Czech Republic and Russia. 
by the end of the year, the United States has passed 350,000 dead, while Brazil is number two on the list with close to 200,000. India and Mexico are the third and fourth nation to have passed 100,000, close to 150,000 and 125,000 respectively by December 31st. It is still to be determined as to what extent the pandemic and the global economic downturn that followed affected the long-term trends of reduced poverty, lower fertility rates and the shrinking disease burden. The closed borders, reduced or even halted transportation and disruptions to global trade affected the emissions of greenhouse gases, but is less likely to have a positive environmental effect long-term. By the end of 2020, vaccines are approved by the first national governments and the large-scale global vaccination program is taking its first baby steps. Thank you for watching this short and by no means comprehensive summary of 2020. If you enjoyed my graphical visualizations, you might find interest in other videos I've made, and you can click through to one of them featured on the screen right now.